Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another uh, weekend update show of uh, the AccessToTrader.com. Well, weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having uh, a great weekend. So uh, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about uh, the market action uh, from last week. Uh, a, a few things were notable. And one thing I really want to touch upon going into this week that's going to be incredibly important. Number one, uh, understanding basic technical analysis. Again, that was kind of the theme uh, for, for a year and year and year. Again, markets come, markets go, but your foundation is always going to be your ability uh, not only to read a chart properly, okay, without, uh, you know, having uh, to ask 30 people their opinions because charts are, are, are really not subjective, okay? Uh, as much as you can have an opinion, a chart is really going to play out uh, very, very specifically, okay, whether you like it or not. So, for example, uh, on Friday, you know, again, the stock to its community is pretty, pretty funny, but one gentleman said, you know, there was a, there was a pivot on Tesla to the downside, and I said, well, if it breaks this pivot, it's going to go lower. And this person says, well, it's not going to fall. Well, because why? You don't want it to fall? Again, reality, right? Reality and your reality are completely different. So the ability, the most basic, minimalistic ability to read a chart is going to be very, very important. But also understand that every great market, okay, and I don't care uh, how many years you've traded, somebody will eventually run into a really great market. Obviously, uh, the internet craze is, it was the, you know, the, the shining star. Uh, I've talked about it numerous times and for all you guys who were lucky enough to, to trade that during that period of time, you kind of, you know, you kind of know the gist of it. Uh, this market that we've been seeing now for the last several years has been untouchable. The closest thing I've seen uh, to the internet craze, and it took me a long time to really acknowledge that, but when you see retail money really coming in very, very aggressively, again, I don't want to use the Robinhood platform as the point of retail money, but again, it's very, very hard not to. Um, but when you see retail money flow incredibly getting aggressive, no matter what the news is on the table, no matter uh, what the, the, the global ramifications, again, think, think about what we've, we've gone through just in the last you know, first six months of the year, okay? We've seen a global pandemic. Um, we've seen pretty much a, a halt in the economy, okay? Most of us were literally on house arrest for what, three, four, five months, okay? Um, so we've seen incredible unemployment. We, we've seen every anything that could possibly riot, uh, anything possible, that could go wrong in 2020 and in, in a year uh, from kind of the Main Street point of view, we've seen it, but yet the market continued uh, to really get aggressive. But un unfortunately, and, and this is just the reality, I'm, I'm not trying to be uh, Debbie Downer, I'm not trying to uh, you know, put you know, rain on anybody's parade, especially on, on a beautiful, beautiful Sunday uh, summer morning, but, but every rally eventually, no matter if it's, if there's a global materialistic issue that's going to finally, you know, punch it in the head or just gravity, it's going to end. It's just, it's just the reality. If you go back in history, the greatest rallies we've had, uh, ended. Okay. Just, it's just reality. And then, you know, at some point it starts up again. Um, the most amazing part of this rally is, um, I, I think the most opinion, opinionated rally this market is because it's been hated so much. And I think a lot of the fund managers really created this hate and really created this fuel back to the upside because they started shorting the market very, very early, quote unquote, on the dead cat bounce. Because logically, it was the right thing to do, right? Think about this. If you have a global pandemic and the world stops and the economy stops and everybody's on, on 45 million plus unemployed, uh, global cases uh, of, of, of this incredible, horrific virus, <clears throat> people dying all over the place. It makes sense. It makes total sense. And at some point, that fuel to the fire got amplified because the market wasn't going down. And next thing you know, you had this really, really aggressive run-up. Call it short covering. Call it uh, the specul speculation money order flow. Call it even the Robin Hood. Okay? It doesn't make a difference what you call it. Again, you could put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. So the idea that this type of market was going to go on forever, 
uh, was a little bit naive. It's just like me turning around in 2000, in the middle of 2000, saying, wow, this is, gr this is the greatest market ever, right? The, gl you know, the global internet is growing and this is going to be you know, the, the greatest, greatest life ever that we could all live because this market's never going to go down. Yada, yada, yada. Internet craze only lasted for about 18 months. So the first, you know, the first order of business when, you, when you're looking for any type of, let's just call it gravity. Okay. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put more uh, into it than it actually is. But any type of sign of gravity uh, is a couple of things. Um, number one, the stocks that ran up, they stopped going up. Uh, and I know it sounds very, very simplistic, but, but think about it. You know, if Amazon has gone up uh, over and over and over again on upgrades, on price target increases, and then Amazon, for example, the buyers get tired, the upgrades become very, very kind of almost like benign, okay? And the stock stops going up because of an upgrade. And then you see kind of an exhaustion chamber started forming. And next thing you know, you start having a, a rolling top. Um, so that's a very clear, I'm just using Amazon as an example. You could use anything. You could use Apple, you could use NVIDIA, you could use any stock. I'm just using Amazon as an example. Uh, the second thing, obviously, and I, and I think this is uh, as important as kind of reading market sentiment, is technical analysis, right? Technical analysis, the idea that technical damage is around the corner is very, very important. So, for example, this past week, you know, we identified the blow-off top, okay? We talked about this uh, on for, for Tuesday into Wednesday session. We identified that. We identified the rollover. And now we're kind of at the point of where you saw Friday session and Thursday going into Friday, we had this really aggressive rally in the last, like, 45 minutes. And I went from literally from Thursday at around 2.30, 2.45 in the afternoon to being 99% sell bias to Friday being, well, I think I like the market. I think, I think we're going to go higher just because the way the market completely really bounced off this rising support. And then next thing you know, when we started talking about in the live webinar, futures are up on Friday. Um, futures are up Friday, you know, a little bit pre-market. And I turned around in the, in, in, in the morning strategy and I said, well, these charts are kind of a mess. And again, one of the benefits, again, being in the live webinar, you know, we're constantly playing devil's advocate. It's not just, well, rose-colored glasses, let's see what happens. And I started talking about morning strategy that, you know, it's almost like the question for Friday's session was, well, did the market really rally on Friday or was program buying uh, the culprit, right? The kind of the catalyst to get the markets, to get the structure, at least from the macro view, positive again. And we got that answer very, very quickly. It's almost like the question, what happened, you know, came first, the kitchen, uh, the, the, the chicken or the egg. And I was, I was very confused Friday morning, like I, during morning strategy, uh, for all you guys who obviously get uh, the email every night. You just go through go through uh, the webinar uh, the, the webinar uh, recording just in the first 20 minutes. And I said, I have no idea what to do here. Like I have no idea just because how confusing it was because I didn't know if the run up on Friday was literally uh, artificial insemination, okay, or was this real buying to kind of, well, kind of start this next uptrend again. And we got that answer very, very quickly, okay, incredibly quickly. And the worst part about Friday's session, if you're a macro bull, okay, and you're a believer in the bull market was that the, fr the Thursday gain from three o'clock into the close was gone within the first five to 10 minutes. Like it was gone. The first 200 points that uh, ran up on Thursday night was gone in the first five minutes. So now your question was, was there going to be another successful test of this rising wedge? And why is this rising wedge important? This is kind of where the catalyst we go uh, into this week. You, you, you can see it with your naked eye. Again, and I, and I say this to new traders, you don't need to understand every moving part of technical analysis. But as long as you have the eyeball test, right, and you can look at a chart, even again, even if you don't know what you're talking about, even if you know, don't know what you're looking for, if you could identify similarities, okay, that's one step closer to you becoming to having, having a really good gauge on how to really read a chart properly. And if you notice what's been happening in the last three, four months is this big rising wedge, right? This is all rising sentiment, rising support. Every single time, right, we, we were about to hit technical damage, we bounced, right? Hit technical damage, we bounced. And this is even uh, two weeks ago, we, we, you know, we hit technical damage, we were about to close under, and then we bounced. And here we are again, 
Okay, and here we are uh, once again looking into the barrel, well, at least the bulls are looking uh, at a barrel of a really loaded gun. Now, before you turn around and say, yeah, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Again, remember, buy the dip only works until it doesn't, right? It's a bull market uh, fantasy that once it goes into bear mode or, or to sell mode, buy the dip doesn't exist. Okay, again, like I've said this for years. This is the only business in the world when things go on sale, people don't want to buy. They think they do. The idea sounds great. Uh, it's the idea that somebody ran with buy the dip, right? Bears never learn, buy the dip, until they get caught on a multiple wave of tremendous selling. And this is the first close that I could remember, because, because remember, every close prior to this was above this rising wedge, right? This was prior, right? This is an engulfing candle. It, it held, it held, it held, it held, it held, and it bounced that day. This is the first close that we've seen now in the last, probably in the last four months since all this started, that this is a make it or break it. And, and again, I, I, I can't emphasize how important Monday's trading session is, okay? Um, this is a day that literally, okay, and again, you could turn around and say, Dan, you're crazy, you're blowing things up. I'm not, I'm really not. You can think that, and if it makes you feel better watching this, uh, I, I've, I've never really turned around and say, well, this is a make it or break it short-term sentiment, but this is kind of, you know, this is kind of is. And if yesterday's sell-off, if Friday's sell-off gets confirmed here, okay, you have literally eight to 10 points down in the QQQs. And it's just not in the NASDAQ 100 that you've obviously seen a lot of really decimated charts, especially on Thursday into Friday, and that are very, really, really close uh, to performing incredible amount of technical damage. I'll go through this, some, some of the charts for you. But if you go through the other indexes, and again, I'll use the SPY uh, instead of the SPX, but uh, you know, the SPY again is sitting on rising support. Again, think about this. This is, this is last time we hit rising support, we bounced really hard. This is the first time we closed right on rising support. Now again, really aggressive technical damage doesn't happen until we lose this 298, but you could see it. You could visually see it. The low here right here is 296.74. Any close below 298 on the SPYs, it's not good, okay? Again, you can, you can romanticize it any way you want. You can make excuses. Again, technical analysis is not a subjective tool. Th these are the facts, okay? You could, either, um, you could either make necessary steps to put yourself in a position to win, take necessary steps to, make, to put yourself in a position not to lose, or get the hell out of the way. There's only, you only have three choices. You can't just sit there and hope it doesn't happen. Uh, if you look at the Russell, right? If you look at the Russell, you, you could see it with your eyes. It's held now this rising, it's held now literally this rising support three times. The more times it tested, obviously there's a very high probability it's gonna break it. So you see this area here, this 136 on the IWM. Again, it doesn't look that bad until, right? Until it breaks 136, then you have this measure potential to this 134 area. Again, it doesn't sound that bad, but think about if it loses this last rising support here, where the technical damage to confirm. So you get you you, you have to really understand where we are in the spectrum. Again, maybe it might not happen, this massive, massive wave of another selling tomorrow, but again, at least prepare yourself. Like we talked about, you know, uh, two, three days ago on that blow off top on the queues. We know where we are. There's a blow off top. There's an inverted hammer. Protect yourself. Do whatever you need to do. Don't be one of these uh, traders, especially if you're, if you're a new trader and say, well, who could have possibly seen this coming? I'm telling you, this is right in front of us. So you have to put ourselves in a situation to say, well, again, maybe I shouldn't look at the breakout stock. Maybe that's not where the value is. Maybe I shouldn't look at the stock that's up three weeks in a row that's starting to put in lower highs now for two, three days. Maybe I should start looking at stocks that did rally for the last two, three days, that didn't put any type of fight when the futures spiked on that, uh, on that uh, program buy on Thursday. Maybe I should start looking at the charts that are starting to, to really test the multiple levels of support. That's where the value is. Again, you, you, in this business, it's, it's, it's a relentless business. There, there are no mulligans, guys, okay? Once your money is on the table, it's gone, okay? If you're wrong, it's gone. It's just the reality. So you have to be prepared uh, going into tomorrow's session. So if you look at a lot of names that had really, really big run-ups, right? Your Amazons of the world, okay, right? And blow off top, you had that program buy, that program guy, Lost it really, really quickly. Uh, Twenty-seven, twelve. You know, now it's on the ten-day again. If you believe the ten-day uh, moving average is the birth of the trade to the upside, 
But what do you think is going to happen if the 10-day gets confirmed to the downside? Again, it might not look that bad, but again, 2690 to 2600 is still 90 points, right? That's a big, big deal. When you look at Facebook, for example, okay, and it had this really, really nasty candle on Friday. Okay, what do you, I mean, like, what do you think is going to happen if this 50-day moving average gets confirmed? Again, maybe it doesn't look that bad, right, if you're a longer-term investor, but from the short term, you know, going from 216 to 207, it's not the best thing in the world that you could possibly see. Even NVIDIA, right, that had this really, really big run. Look how close it is, really, right? Think, look at look at the rising wedge, right? Here's the rising wedge. Bounce, bounce. What happens, I mean, what do you think happens in NVIDIA if it closes below this rising wedge, this rising 20-day? This thing has 20 to, 20 to 30 points of downside. So, again, these are just, a, you know, a few examples of what might happen. So, your job today or you know your job this evening whatever or wherever the case may be of you looking at charts your job is to make sure that number one if you are heavenly invested okay knowing this information in front of you and again you could take it or leave it again that's up to you we're all adults you're allowed to do um you know you're allowed to do with your money whatever you want your dance your dance floor and again can this all happen? Absolutely. Can I be wrong? Yeah, listen, again, I'm wrong every single day. But again, it's okay to be wrong theoretically. Just do not be wrong financially. So, for example, if we do get a gap up for, for whatever reason on Monday, right? We do get a gap up tomorrow. And you knowing this information is possible, this is your time to kind of really understand what your game plan is going forward. If you are fully invested, again, you know, what is your course of action? If you want to stay fully invested, do you start putting on hedges, right? Do you start shorting some of the ETFs? Do you start uh, buying one of these creative uh, derivatives like the, you know, the, like the, you know, the SQQ, whatever, whether the dogs, whatever, whatever they are. Do you start putting yourself in a position that if, if all hits, hits the fan, okay, you are protected. Again, whether it's net short, whether it's uh, fully hedged, on, on your long position, but again, do something proactive. Sitting there on the sidelines, complaining about it after the fact, knowing that this information in front of you is not gonna do anything good for you. So you, you have to really take course of action. Now again, is this gonna happen? Again, we don't know, right? All these things need to confirm. These are all opinions. Uh, these, are, uh, these are situations that if they do happen, yes, I believe in technical analysis and I believe this will happen, but again, we can't forecast this happen. We can't anticipating this happen. We need to actually see it and then make adjustments uh, to get very, very aggressive uh, to the downside. So uh, very aggressive trading week. Um, one of, one of, you know, again, actions are unbelievable. The action has been really, really good. Um, you've seen a lot of things kind of derail uh, a little bit of the enthusiasm. Number one, uh, you're seeing aggressive cases in COVID. I think Florida had like 9,000 cases uh, overnight, which is which is a lot, okay, which is absolutely a lot. Uh, we see, we started seeing a lot of uh, states that initially didn't have the massive outbreaks that we saw in New York, New Jersey, uh, especially New York, New Jersey, that are starting to get very, very aggressive. Uh, states like uh, Texas, obviously states like Florida uh, in Georgia that did open up uh, a lot earlier than everybody else. Um, so obviously that is uh, putting a wrench into this rally as well. Um, even in, and again, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I believe that anybody in office is irrelevant. I do. I, I also believe that a lot of my friends growing up, uh, you know, they're very, very passionate about politics. I'm not, uh, again, uh, I believe that if you have that much passion for a candidate, whether you're a Republican or you're, uh, or you're, you're, you're a Democrat, if you put that energy into your own personal life, okay, you'd be much more uh, happier. Uh, again, it doesn't make a difference who's in office. But having said that, um, Joe Biden in a lot of polls uh, started seeing a bump, right? Started seeing a bump. Even some some polls he actually uh, had a lead. So that kind of freaked the market out as well. Again, this is not this is not pro Trump. This is not against Trump. Again, for me. I'm, I'm right in the middle. I, this, I, I respect the office no matter who's in it. So it's not a political stance one way or another. It's just kind of me just telling you the facts. Um, so that shook the market as well. So I think going into this week, number one, uh, we need to see how any early selling, okay, um, gets handled. Okay, the buyers swoosh in. And there's a, you know, there's a very, very aggressive defense, especially on the 20-day rising moving average. This is going to be something incredibly important, kind of setting the tone for the week. Uh, again, any close on the indexes under, uh, under the 20-day moving average, especially on the Qs, 
uh, on the, it's going to be bad. It's going to be absolutely bad. So we have to, you know, we have to pay attention, especially in the first uh, two hours of the day. Uh, Friday session, very, very aggressive. You can see here, uh, and this is kind of my thought process. I, you know, I, I literally said I have no idea what's going on. I think I, I said I think I like the market to the upside based on uh, Thursday close. But, but again, the charts were a mess. I go, the charts are a mess this morning. Everything's in the middle of the range. Just sit tight. So naturally, I started putting in pivots to the upside, right? And then I started putting pivots to the downside after after we completely collapsed and gave back Thursday's move within the first, you know, literally five, 10 minutes of the day. So I started putting in charts to the upside, 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 right? They all put in their initial moves. There was no way even near a confirmation to the upside, obviously, because everything pulled very, very aggressively. So again, it's, it's a pretty basic thing in trading. And this is where we talk about not painting yourself into a corner, okay? You always have to be very, very nimble to switch sides, switch bases, uh, switch buys very, very quickly. Again, it's not the, mar the market we need to see. It's the market we have in front of us. So it's incredibly important to kind of go with the trend and not, you know, not fight against it or kind of make excuses. So uh, these were all pivots to the upside, nothing confirmed upside, not even close. And then next thing you know, we said, you know what? Things are starting to sell off. Let's start looking to the downside. And we did, right? So here was the first one. Uh, I didn't have a locate on this thing, unfortunately, but that was a hell of a flush. For all you guys who did get it, congratulations. Uh, I know if it builds below 30, uh, can flush. Uh, here was I know had this really, really monster big gap up, uh, monster run for the last like three, four days. Uh, here is the 30 pivot. Uh, here is the 30 pivot here right at this area right here. Here's the 30 pivot. And this thing just got just destroyed. Uh, it went down like like five and a half, six points on that first candle. So if you did catch it, uh, congratulations. Incredible. Move. I mean, just incredible, incredible move. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have a uh, I didn't have a locate. Um, Netflix uh, 460 if it builds below can flush. Uh, NKLA obviously never got to the 74 level. Uh, 460 on Netflix if it builds below can flush. Netflix got just destroyed. I mean, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, here is the you know here is the 460 level right. Uh, excuse me. Here is the 460 level right here, and just just demolished. Just 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 destroyed. Uh, I mean, this is again. This shows you the aggressive nature of this market. Again, buy the dip only works. Uh, when there's a, you know, when there's a, there's a rose colored glass effect that everything's all happy in the world. And look at me, look at the move. I mean, this is a, you know, 30 point move from top to bottom on Netflix got just murdered. Uh, Tesla 974, 970 last two areas of support. If the builds below, uh, can fall hard. And if you look at Tesla, Tesla is literally one day away from getting really aggressive technical damage. So here's the uh, 974 area uh, went you know all, went all the way down to this 950s level uh, and again this is literally one day away you know from getting technical damage this thing confirms this uh, 20 day moving average just the, just kind of like mirroring every other ETF major ETF this is you know this thing has 70 points in it again if the market starts selling you have two three weeks of selling why, why can't Tesla fall down 70 points again for me I don't care. I trade Tesla to the upside, to the downside. For me, it doesn't make a difference. But again, logically, if you believe that stocks trade from supply to supply and stocks trade from demand to demand, again, there's nothing in between the 20-day moving average and the 50. So there's a lot of room uh, to the downside. So you have to be very, very, you know, you have to really be alert. Uh, take on the way down. Netflix destroyed. Uh, yeah, you know, 948, 950 is the bottom of the range. Uh, DraftKings, nice move on DraftKings as well. Again, you know, you're seeing all these, you know, like when, when uh, I, I remember when Rudy Gobert, I think it was the first NBA player to test positive for COVID, uh, the NBA suspended their season within within 15 minutes. OK, now they have this plan and, and, and it does feel and again, listen, I am the, the last person who's going to say anything bad about any sports uh, to open up. And I'm dying for sports. If you're like me. Uh, and you love sports, the NBA, the NFL, hell, even baseball at this point. Um, you need sports in your life. It's just, it's just so necessary. So I'm the last person to say, hey, this shouldn't open up. Okay. But what you're seeing from the first test that was positive to kind of where we are now, I think out of the 22 teams that are set to open up and, and, and the, the season is set to open up, I believe on July the 30th, right? I think this is the first, the first game of the NBA. Um, now you see 6% of the players that are participating test positive and how the market, how the world has changed in four months. Now, you know, they're just kind of force feeding it. I get the television money. I get all that, man. I get all that. But, you know, again, you can see how the almighty dollar is much more important these days than the overall health. And again, I don't want to get into the whole discussion. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a big flu. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's, whatever you believe, I respect your belief, respect mine as well. 
But it, but again, at the end of the day, look how things changed in four months. And DraftKings again, it had a big run up on a on a you know on a, on a uh, anticipation of all these leagues uh, running up. And again, if if there is just one doubt of you know one of these leagues opening up. These things are gonna get hit. So we took, you know, we looked, we looked at this 34, 15, 34 daily. Any close below starts next leg down. Uh, here is DraftKings, right? So it took out this 34, 14, 34 level. Uh, traded down to like 32, 60s. Again, it should get, you know, it should get down to this 30, uh, 30 area. I still like the downside of this uh, as well. Uh, DraftKings was a nice move there as well. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's it. You, you didn't need a lot, right? You need a lot. The, the, I think the biggest problem with Friday's session was, of course, there was some aggressive action to the downside uh, with Tesla and Netflix. Uh, Roku as well. I forgot to, I, I apologize for all you guys on the Twitter feed. Uh, I forgot to put Roku, um, I forgot to put Roku uh, on the feed. There was a 23 uh, break that, you know, went down as well. Um, the problem with Friday's session was, number one, we had to figure out, okay, if if the buying from Thursday was real or the buying was program driven to kind of set the floor, okay, which it, obviously we got our answer in the first two days, uh, first five ten minutes of the day. So, and also the problem on Friday, if you caught, if you found yourself either getting chopped up, okay, uh, or kind of confused, you had a right to be because the first big big move came on one candle. The, the second big move to the upside came on one big candle and then everything kind of went kind of sideways to down for the rest of the day, uh, causing kind of a you know pretty ugly 3% uh, move for the Dow and the S&P to kind of end the week with a 2% down uh, for the NASDAQ uh, for the NASDAQ composite. But, but I think more important is the market continues to be really, really good. For all you guys uh, who don't trade on the short side, and again, um, I understand it, okay, I understand it, because again, it took me years and years and years to kind of really get comfortable uh, trading from both sides of the ledger, so I get that part, but the one thing you do have to understand is God gave you uh, two arms, uh, two feet, right, two eyes, two ears, market God's given you both sides of the market to trade, so you could be equally uh, progressive and proactive in both, and again, especially if we do start confirming the 20-day moving average, on a lot of these indexes, uh, again, you have two choices, either sit it out, which is absolutely nothing wrong with it, especially if you're a new trader and you're not used to market aggression, uh, or you can participate to the downside, uh, which obviously, again, you can do so uh, by buying um, buy, uh, buying bearish ETFs to the upside, obviously shorting the market via equity or buying puts. Uh, but the last thing you want to do, and this is kind of my piece of advice, especially for new traders, when the market has technical damage, there are no breakouts. Okay, when you, when when I hear when I see people talking about break, especially in March, when I saw the market completely just getting destroyed day after day after day, and people talking about breakouts, it's 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 a novice it's a novice thing to say. There's no professional trader going to sit there and say the stock is breaking out when the rest of the market is imploding. Again, you could you might catch a trade once, you might catch a trade twice. But if you're going against the tidal wave, eventually it's going to drown you. So be very, very careful uh, what you do if we do, uh, if we start putting in uh, technical damage. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us uh, in the live webinar this week, please get there. Uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time, that's when Morning Strategy kicks in. If you are joining us on the Twitter feed, which is a, which is a perfect place, if you ever you know, try to uh, wonder if the pivots are for you, that's the perfect place to start, especially if you can't get into the live webinar. Uh, for the rest of you guys, have an awesome week. Enjoy your life. Uh, again, we don't get a mulligan, right? Just the same way when you put your money on the table, you don't get a mulligan uh, to get it back. So enjoy your love, uh, life, love your family, learn to smile. And God bless you all. See you all tomorrow, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.